global warming is a global problem. But with 70% of CO2 emissions coming from a small handful of cities, global warming's origins are necessarily local in nature. Unfortunately, the current approach to carbon monitoring involves a small number of expensive instruments that, while providing a highly accurate integrated signal over a given area, cannot hope to resolve the heterogeneous landscape of contributions to an urban total. But in order to regulate CO2 more effectively, lawmakers will require more specific information about which of their policies are working and which resources need to be reallocated. So along with my advisor, Ron Cohen, <clears throat> we have constructed a novel CO2 sensing approach that seeks to address this mismatch in scale between science and policy. Beacon, or the Berkeley Atmospheric CO2 Observation Network, is a web of 28 CO2 sensors stationed at two kilometer intervals across the Oakland metropolitan area. Each beacon sensor is therefore much more sensitive to its unique local environment, allowing us to drill down into the integrated urban total and further differentiate between CO2 coming from cars, trucks, ships, buildings, etc. In order to afford this high volume of sensors, we rely on low cost, off the shelf technologies, previously believed to provide only moderate quality measurements. Over the course of our three year pilot period, we have developed in situ corrections for the influence of meteorology as well as temporal drift. After applying these corrections, we demonstrate performance on par with instruments 100 times more expensive. Now we are generating the highest resolution maps of CO2 concentrations ever made. And from there, we can feed these observations into inverse atmospheric models that follow the CO2 molecules backwards in time and space to their point of emission. Comparing these emission maps with our prior estimates reveals where our assumptions about CO2 sources might be wrong. So for example, when the east span of the Bay Bridge was closed to traffic, Beacon was able to correctly diagnose that there were reduced CO2 emissions coming from the bridge on that day relative to what we would expect. And not only that, but Beacon was also able to show us where people were probably driving instead. And this proof of concept could be easily extended to subtler, more policy relevant phenomena, such as the increasing fraction of electric vehicles. More recently, we have supplemented our CO2 instruments with sensors for toxic gases as well as particulate matter. And already the ratios between these trace species and CO2 are helping us to differentiate between different CO2 sources, such as heavy duty diesel trucks versus gasoline powered passenger vehicles. In the future, we look forward to informing more efficient policy at home, while also providing a validated framework for low cost CO2 monitoring abroad, where emissions are on the rise, but resources are often scarce. Global warming may be a global problem, but Beacon can help us characterize and combat it more effectively one neighborhood at a time. Thank you. That's great research, uh, Alexis. So the, um, I would assume that the, the, the fixed source emissions probably don't change that much, or, or, or do they? So is it, is it mostly measuring transportation changes and, and also um, changes in, in climate and, and wind? And Absolutely, yeah. So the point sources are tightly regulated, so they're usually reporting their emissions, and we, sh we should be able to have a good handle on those. Although under-reporting, either <laughs> consciously or unconsciously, is something that we could potentially catch with the system. But yes, traffic in particular is something that's really poorly estimated by uh, what we call bottom-up inventories that just take uh, vehicle counts and multiply it by some uh, emissions factor. And those uh, traffic counts don't do great at predicting things like congestion or uh, cold start mm. days when your engine is uh, revving up from being cold in the yeah. morning. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that we can really help constrain from a top-down perspective. That's terrific. Thank you so much. Thank you.